What's up guys? Welcome back to the channel. So let's go over the best tier list for all the classes in Diablo 3 for the brand new season 29. So starting right off, I know there's a lot of people coming from maybe let's say Diablo 4 or they haven't played Diablo 3 in a while and they have that itch to come back and play another action RPG while they may be waiting for the next season. So just as a heads up, there's going to be two tier lists in this video. There is going to be what I would consider the meta, the push, which one is going to be able to push the highest. But the thing with this season is the new seasonal mechanic only lets you go up into Torment 16 where you are doing these new visions. These new visions of enmity areas are these brand new portals. You can see uh, we are just demolishing content with the brand new Crusader. So I want to go ahead and mention that every single class is going to be viable to do this. Every single class, almost every single build can basically be an S tier character for the new season mechanic. So I want to go ahead and make kind of two tier lists in this video, but I want to start off with what essentially got buffed. <laughs> So there were a lot of changes to three classes in particular that did receive some sort of new things to have some fun with. The first thing that you guys are seeing is actually going to be the brand new Crusader, which basically just rides on a horse and just deletes content. It is by far one of the most enjoyable things to play. However, it is very squishy, has problems with cooldown reduction if you're looking to push for GR 150s. So in that aspect, it does do a great amount of damage surprisingly, but it requires really good positioning because of Squirt's Necklace and you're not going to have 100% uptime on every single like cooldown and that is because well you need to scale a lot more of your attack speed to actually activate all these little like lightnings that are coming out with Fist of the Heavens. I would put it in the A tier in terms of character build for like the meta the pushing but in terms of fun tier if you haven't played Diablo in a while and you're coming back to this game the Crusader is just so much fun. If you are looking for the smoothest the chillest build like you can like you know maybe do something else while you're also playing Diablo because sometimes I like to you know tune out and play some Diablo maybe while watching like a TV show. This is really great for that. It's a really simple build and your friends will love you if you play this and you power level them because it's so fast. All you need to do is activate the horse and run. I have the full build guide already ready for you and I'll be pinning them down below. But the Crusader, in my personal opinion, subjective, this is the fun tier, is no doubt S tier. Like even though it's arguably subjective, this is the most fun I've had in a while with Crusader. If you've ever played Crusader and felt like they were super slow, which they were, this is the first season where I'm like, like, dude, this Crusader is actually insane with the exception of maybe when we had that like PTR bombardment where you could like do a GR 150 with like no gear. That was a really good build, but that build actually got nerfed before it was like officially out. So in terms of the fun tier, that's where I'm putting the Crusader. The next thing that actually got some extra new tools to play around with is the Witch Doctor that uh, got the chicken build. This brand new build, and I want to say brand new kind of in quotations, and it's because even with the Crusader build, it's technically something that kind of existed before but now it's just like ramped up because of the new season mechanic where you can put way more paragon points in certain areas. So the Eric here variant of the chicken witch doctor is actually a lot more viable. There was a chicken build before, but now it kind of almost functions similar to the crusader build where you're able to basically activate certain abilities and then run around. Now with the Witch Doctor in terms of it being like one of the best builds, it's definitely one of the best builds for Witch Doctor. Like if I was to gauge it, it's anywhere from like A or B tier. At this point in Diablo, so many of the builds are just really close with the exception of the S tier, which we'll get into. They're really, really close and it plays similar to the Crusader build, although the Crusader build is a lot easier to play. So if you want the hilarious ability to be a chicken in the game, you'll see we'll enter the new visions of Emity over here, which is the new season mechanic. Again, it only goes T16. The build still shreds. However, there is no doubt that the Crusader is way more friendly to play. The reason why is because once you go outside of the chicken in the chicken build for the Witch Doctor, you're going to have to activate a bunch of these buffs and certain ones will actually kind of go away. And that is because one of like your spirit ab absorption ones needs to kind of be active in order for you to min-max a little bit harder. But in terms of the playstyle, it's very similar. I would just rather go with the Crusader, but it is still a fun build at the end of the day. But that's kind of how the chicken build works. So again, relatively a decent build that just requires a lot more button pushing. So I would put it in the A tier for competitive and in the A tier as well for like the subjective. And I get asked all the time, Slager, what should I play during season 29? And the answer is no matter what, guys, just as a heads up for the starters, I would always, always roll Demon Hunter when Shadow Set is available because you have 100% chance to always craft something good. The best starters pretty much in Diablo 3 because I know some people want to use this video. So I'm just going to mention this real quick. The best starter classes in 
basically most situations is always going to be Demon Hunter as well as Necromancer. Necromancer does require you to purchase the Necromancer DLC just as a heads up because again a lot of people that are coming from D4 are now interested in D3 so this class technically you do have to like buy but at the same time the reason why is because with the new season you get the start of the Hadrig's gift as well as you get the bonus of crafting one random item and Demon Hunter has 100% and the Necromancer has 100% chance to get a really great head start. Even even if you want to play, let's say, the Crusader like myself, I'm still rolling a Demon Hunter because it has just a way faster start. And then I can roll the Crusader and then I can get my six piece later. So that's also something I do want to factor in uh, when I'm going to go ahead and mention it, this list. So now that I also got that like bonus tip out of the way, because again, a lot of people may be using uh, this video for like which class to start. The next thing I want to go over is the Talrasha Meteor. Now this is footage from a previous season, but it's relatively the same in terms of how it plays because, well, it got nothing new. So I didn't bother even recording any of the PTR footage. And if you're looking to push that GR 150, well, this is probably going to be your build. So in terms of it being meta, I mean, this is the this is hands down, no question. I don't think that anyone's going to argue. This is kind of like objectively the best build in the game. It's because it can do a 150 better than most builds. And there are some builds that will kind of cap out around 140-ish plus. And that is because this season, we only have 800 Paragon points. Now this build, it's super colorful. I would say it's really, really fun as well. Uh, in terms of fun tier, I mean, you're launching so many meteors. But I want to say it can't really beat the Crusader because the Crusader is literally you ride your horse and you just delete the whole screen. There is nothing else that comes close to how fun that is. Uh, even though the Witch Doctor is similar, it's just way faster. But in terms of fun tier, it's a really good build. It's satisfying. You get to see all these meteors, all the vibrant colors coming out. I like it. It's really good. But in terms of pushing, it's hands down S tier. There's like really no doubt. So the Tal Rasha build is great. And you also start off with Firebirds, which is not a terrible set, but it does take some time to, of course, get all your pieces. Whereas where if you are playing, let's say, the Demon hunter you are going to shred content super super fast which is something i want to go into so um this one over here uh, this was a top five push uh for the leaderboards so i'm not going to be one shredding everything because i'm doing my high push uh so in terms of the demon hunter in terms of fun tier you'll be able to one shot like you know screens of enemies similar to the crusader it fulfills a fantasy that i think a lot of people like which is like a ranged whirlwind in terms of fun tier i like it. it is one of the most satisfying builds to see all of these things just get deleted again this is a push right now uh, that you're seeing in the background for gameplay. I'll mix it up. I'll usually show like T16 because that's kind of what most people like to play the game, right? But it's a really, really fun build and people just like range build. There's also a multi-shot. There's a lot of things that you can go into, but it has hands down one of the best starts. Now, in terms of pushing, it did get a small buff and that is one thing that is new in season 29. It has a small little buff. Basically, you don't have to activate your generator as frequently. Uh, I'd put it in the A tier. It's still going to be losing out to, of course, the uh, wizard because wizard is by far or the sorcerer, same, same thing. Kind of is, is by far the best class but it's not far behind in fact most of the best builds here are not super far behind in general but yeah that's where i would put the demon hunter and the next thing that i want to go over is the raycor barbarian so it's basically a boulder toss it's still very very fun to play it hits really hard if you like things that hit really hard like a, a hoda barb uh, this build is kind of similar to that as you're going to be able to just you can see you're hitting for like billions of damage you just charge in it's pretty satisfying to play for some people if you want to be able to hit like once and hit really hard, I mean, it, it definitely fulfills that fantasy of just demolishing content. Uh, you feel that one shot power. I like it for that reason. I'm putting a lot of these in the A tier because at this point, Diablo 3 is a very, very fun game for a lot of these classes. But in terms of push, again, it's just going to be losing out to the wizard as well as there's another class that is an S tier class. But most of the classes at this point are actually pretty solid here in terms of what I would consider in like these tier lists. Uh, but yeah, the Raycor Barb in terms of being fun, I would almost consider this A tier for like that niche play style because sometimes people like that playstyle of hit once, hit like a truck, hit really, really hard, and the Barbarian definitely fulfills that fantasy. So A and S tier for the fun tier, and then we push again. It, there's just no competition wizard right now. But we still have two more classes here. So next up, we have the Monk. So the Monk is going to be playing Wave of Light. It's going to be a little bit different than what you're seeing here. This is when we had some of the like special weapons. But for the most part, Wave of Light kind of does the same thing. Basically, you're just going to be casting it down and it does a bunch of damage. It's kind of one of those hit relatively hard classes. Now, the thing with the Monk in terms of it 
being a fun tier. This is the one of the classes I'm going to put in the B tier. It's not like bad at all. There's actually a lot of different builds, but the thing with Monk is there's a lot more things to micromanage, especially if you want to play any of the builds that are going to be using a bunch of spirit and you're running the Shenlong set. There's lots of different builds here with Monk that are actually pretty solid, but Wave of Light tends to be one of the more popular ones. And this one, it does require just like a lot of Monk builds in general, they require a lot of cooldown reduction and a lot of like correct usage of rotations on certain things into group enemies. In terms of fun, I'm going to put it in the B tier. It's still a really good class. Again, I'm going to put it in the A tier as well. I know we're going to be like too far off screen here. So don't, don't worry. Uh, these classes are all here. Still, the barb's still an A tier. It's just, we ran out of room. So uh, the reason why I want to put it over here, it's really good for pushing, but it's just really hard on, I would say, what I consider in the fun tier. Some people don't like to push a lot of buttons with their builds, like to wait, wait for this rotation and this thing to happen. And a lot of the monk builds kind of require that, but it is in terms of a speed build, it's definitely, I would put it in the A tier, but overall I'm going to put it in B because it requires a little bit of micromanaging. It requires lots of cooldown reduction for a lot of the builds to function. And with this season, since we can only have 800 Paragon points, well, then you're going to lose out on that attack speed and all the other like extra crit stuff. So there is a little bit of a give and take with the monk. Sure, you can get your cooldowns much easier, but then you're going to be lacking in damage. So monk does suffer a little bit from the season mechanic compared to maybe some of the other classes, because again, it does have a lot of requirements. All right, so now we're going into the last class that I want to go over, which is the Necromancer. So just as a heads up, because I know a lot of people may have purchased Diablo on sale because they come in like a bundle pack. Uh, the Necromancer will also require you to purchase that. And Necromancer in this patch for season 29, it only received nerfs. And it has to do with this carapace. Basically, if you want to play this pet build, it's going to be a little bit worse. But overall, I mean, if it's just T16, you can shred through the content. It's like an easy S tier, right? In, in that aspect, it doesn't really matter because most builds can function. So... I'm going to put it in the B tier because one, you have to purchase it. I know some people are coming in for the first time, but it's not very exciting to hear about your class. Like other classes got some new little toys and new buffs, and then your class only took nerfs. However, I do got to admit in terms of pushing, if you're a meta player, I mean, it's an S tier. The two classes I would say that are going to be able to push 150 are going to be the wizard and necromancer. And that is, there's a lot of different variants of Nova. And a lot of people have the mindset of necromancer being a, you know, a summoner class. You could still do that. You can play summoner, witch doctor, you can play summoner necromancer but for the most part as of right now the meta is pretty much this like nova build there's several different variants of it and necromancer actually has a great start so in terms of like funness in terms of a great start if you're looking for that sure but i'm gonna put it in this category just because in terms of my mindset in terms of a new season i want my character to be buff not like oh there's a new season but all you took was nerfs it just makes me a little bit less excited and on top of that it does need to be purchased so i mean again it, this one I'm kind of varying for many other reasons, but again, because you have to purchase it, uh, I'm going to put it in the B tier category. It's not by any means a bad class, but in terms of the start, it actually has a pretty good start similar to the Demon Hunter, and that is because you get to craft and get a guaranteed legendary that's going to give you a huge power spike in the, the very beginning. So I kind of will be a little bit lenient with this one. And I know this is like our, our subjective tier list where this one is mostly objective here. So pretty much how it's looking is most of the classes are going to be in the A tier category with the exception of the wizard as well as the necromancer just being a little bit above if you are interested in pushing but again that's just kind of up to you and to be honest in this season because i've mentioned it several times it only goes up to t16 every single class is going to be able to just demolish it but how fast well i can confidently say that the crusader there is legitimately nothing that beats how fast this build is i mean you can see me just going in this is just a uh, regular greater rift and we're just able to just ride the horse you just activate the horse and everything just melts instantly and it's probably one of my favorite classes uh going into the season but again sometimes people like to start off on other things but that's going to wrap up the video if you guys enjoyed it drop a like on it and if you're new here subscribe to the bell and we'll come out with a leveling guide very soon for the brand new season take care and let me know what class you guys are going to be playing for me i'm going to be starting off as demon hunter and then i'm going to be playing crusader because well it takes a while to get crusader and demon hunter is by far one of the easier classes to level anyways i'll catch you guys in the next video have a good one I'm signing out. Peace. Also, check the pinned comment if you guys want any of the builds.